Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning to all new undergraduate students of UPM 2020-2021. My name is Rosdi Binwa. I'm the head of administration for Academy and International of UPM. Today I would like to share with you some important matters about academic matters uh, to guide you for your studies in, in UPM. First of all, I would like to congratulate you for being accepted as UPM students. And you know that uh, to become a UPM student is a very uh, competitive uh, program. And uh, you should be proud to be accepted as UPM student. And thank you for choosing UPM as your destination of uh, study. And uh, I will cover some topics uh, which uh, include uh, general information for academic matters, uh, registration and studies, academic system, academic advisor and course of studies, examination, marks and grades, and others. And uh, as you know, um, uh, the economic uh, regulation of UPM is uh, governed by the Kaedah-Kaedah uh, UPM, Perkara Academic Prestaza or English uh, Rule of UPM, Academic Matters for Undergraduate Studies 2014. This is the most important thing for you to, to know, to understand, because this, is, this should be considered as a roadmap uh, for you to ensure that uh, your studies uh, will be uh, going smoothly. And um, as you know, uh, the Lucy's uh, academic matters is governed by the academic calendar. Uh, this is the academic calendar for second semester 2021, which consists of uh, 40 weeks lectures, one week mixed semester break, one week of study weeks, and uh, two weeks of final examination. And the class will start next week, 22nd of March uh, 2021, until 9 of May 2021, seven weeks and then followed by one week of semester break. And then uh, the lectures of, uh, for, 40, for seven weeks will be resumed uh, starting 17 uh, May 2021 until 14 uh, July 2021, followed by study weeks until, seven, until 11 uh, July 2021. And, and then you will sit for your final exam on, 20, on 12 uh, July 2021 until 25th of July 2021. And for Doctor of Medicine program, uh, we have separate academic calendars, although it will commence on the same day with the general academic calendar. Okay, this is the uh, system Malmat Praja, or we call it as uh, Student Portal, or in short, we call it SMP. It's the system that keeps all records on each student's registration, drop and add courses, credit transfer, examination result, profile, etc. And uh, you, will be, you will be given the user ID uh, and also the default uh, password and you should change your password uh, before uh, you use it as your uh, user ID and password uh, for the whole uh, semester or during your studies in UPM. And please uh, be informed that sharing of password is considered as an offence and may result in disciplinary proceeding against such students. So you should consider your user ID and uh, password of uh, SMP as uh, good as your ATM PIN number because uh, all the records in uh, SMP are considered official. And um, it is your responsibility to update your profile information for SMP, including information about sponsorship, address, and etc. And for SMP, we have uh, various modules, which include uh, general smart card, health services, uh, buzzer, admission, uh, schedule, uh, registration, lecturing, student profile, application, student affairs, academic advisor, uh, student portal, examination, etc. And uh, the main reference, as I mentioned earlier, 
is the rules of academic uh, matters for undergraduates 2014 revision 2016 this rule control oversee manage and administer academic matters for undergraduate studies starting from admission to graduation process uh, the whole rules of academic matters for undergraduate studies uh, can be accessed at uh, http www.academic.upm.edu.my uh, slash plaja uh, semasa slash pakara academic dash eight eight seven nine zero and uh, for the registration and studies uh, i would like to inform you that continuous registering is a compulsory which means you have to uh, register every semester is not by default but you have to register it every semester and as a new student what you have to do now the first is to read and understand your study scheme stipulated in program book and the first semester student who has no credit transfer i guess we have no credit transfer uh, because uh, you are not from uh, ex diploma of upm uh, you must register according to the default package provided by faculty and uh, if you have any credit transfer to be to be made you have to apply for credit transfer within the first two weeks uh, through SMP or the student portal. <clears throat> Second, you have to pass a prerequisite course. Any course requires prerequisite can only be registered after student has passed the prerequisite. For instance, if uh, the course uh, Mathematics 2, the prerequisite is Mathematics 1, you have to pass uh, Mathematics 1 before you register for uh, Mathematics 2. The third one is to consult academic matters. Uh, the third one is to consult academic advisors. You have to meet and consult your academic advisor prior to registration. He has to advise you what is the courses to be registered for every semester. And he has to advise you about the studies, the study scheme and the program structure of your academic program. And you have to at least see him at least twice a semester. And uh, please be informed that uh, we have um, a regulation on the credit load per semester. The normal credit load for a semester is between 12 to 20 credits. If you have to take more than 20 credits, you have to get the, the, the uh, approval from the dean prior to the registration of more than 20 credits per, per semester. And uh, although the registration is made online through the SMP or the student portal. Uh, I, will, I would like to remind you that to, to print and keep your registration slip for future reference uh, purposes. And uh, further, it is compulsory to attend at least 80% of lectures and academic activities to qualify for final examination. Please be uh, informed that uh, the attendance of 80% is a compulsory and it will be used by uh, as a reference by uh, the immigration department of malaysia uh, when uh, you apply for extension of uh, student pass and uh, the academic activities will start on the very first day of the semester which means for this semester will start on 22nd of march 2021 <coughs> These are some important uh, weeks for you to, uh, to, to know that uh, according to the uh, academic calendar, uh, for the first week and the second week, this is the period where you can register course. And uh, for the first three weeks, week one, week two, uh, and week three, you can drop course. But if you have uh, to drop any course, on the, on the week three is considered as the late registration and a fee of uh, 15 ringgit will be imposed per cost drop starting week three. And test one uh, will be held around week four, five and six and test two, uh, if any. Some program, they don't have test two. Uh, it will be held around week nine, 10 and 11. And for continuous assessment, uh, we will... Uh, have a continuous assessment not later than uh, week 14. And all students have to uh, complete the pre-registration for next semester, um, week 12, 
to week 14. And uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, you will have a study week on 5th of July 2021 until 11 July 2021, followed by your final examination. And for those who want to withdraw from the program, uh, you can uh, apply uh, to, for, for withdrawal and the tuition fee will be refunded if withdrawal is made within the first two weeks of the semester. Uh, if you uh, apply for withdrawal uh, <coughs> after the second week of the semester, uh, we, will not be, uh, we will not refund your, your, your tuition fees. And a uh, new student is not allowed to change program until the second, until the students uh, finish the second semester of the studies. And as I mentioned earlier, you have to maintain your continuous reg registration. Maintaining continuous assessment, continuous uh, registration is compulsory. And uh, if you fail to register uh, every semester, or you, if you fail to uh, complete the registration within uh, the uh, required period, you will, you will be dropped. You will be dropped from the register list of uh, GPM students. And, uh, and then uh, if you have been dropped from the register list of GPM students, you can apply for reinstatement and uh, such uh, subject to approval of reinstatement will continue, you can continue your study in the following semester. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, continuous registration is a compulsory for you. So failure to complete uh, semester registration is SMP will cause a student being dropped from registration albeit he has followed academic activities. So you must make sure that you fulfill, you complete all your registration every semester. A student whose name has been dropped may apply for reinstatement and subject to approval of reinstatement will continue his study in the following semester. A fee of 100 ringgit will be charged for reinstatement. A student whose name has been dropped for more than two consecutive semesters is disqualified from applying for reinstatement. And uh, further, a student who register a course and quit the course without dropping the course is SMP will be given an F grade. So uh, please be reminded that uh, every course, every record in SMP is count. So the only official record uh, of your studies is your SMP records. We have a classification of bachelor students based on the credit earned. Uh, as you are the new student, you are classified as freshman. And for those who have earned a credit between 31 to 60, uh, is, they will be classified as sophomore. And uh, further, uh, those who earn credit between 61 to 90 will be considered as uh, junior. And uh, those who have earned 91 credit and above uh, will be considered as senior student. All student has have to pay fees accordingly. Ensure all fees are paid accordingly. A student with debt except who receives scholarship or sponsorship will be barred from performing pre-registration on week 12 to week 14. A student who has outstanding fee on week 14 will not be allowed to sit for final examination. And a student with debt, including failure in paying an, any fine or penalty, uh, including late return of books and traffic summons, will be barred from registration. You have to, you have to maintain a clean bill uh, regarding your financial status with UPM. At UPM, we allow credit transfer. So uh, we have two types of credit transfer, uh, which is uh, credit trans horizontal credit transfer, which is from the same program, same level of program to same level of program. 
which means from bachelor to bachelor, bachelor A, for instance, to bachelor B. And we have also vertical credit transfer, uh, which is from uh, lower uh, level of studies uh, to uh, the higher level of uh, studies uh, from diploma to bachelor. Generally, maximum credit transfer can be granted is 50% subject to program standard and residential requirements. And uh, for horizontal credit transfer, credit transfer and grade obtained will be computed in the CGPA of a new program. And for vertical credit transfer, uh, credit transfer um, will credit will be transferred, but uh, the, we will not carry uh, the grade to be computed uh, in the CGPA of the new program. The maximum total credit transfer from diploma under Malaysian Qualification uh, Framework Level 4 to bachelor's program under Malaysian Qualification Framework of Level 6 can be granted is 50%. And uh, credit required for graduation for the current program uh, as, uh, as follows. Um, the maximum the, the percentage of credit transfer uh, from 1 to 30 percent, the minimum grade for same cost is grade C and minimum grade for equivalent cost is C plus. And uh, 31 to 50 percent of credit transfer, uh, the minimum grade for same cost is grade B and the minimum grade for equivalent cost is uh, also the grade B. So how to apply for credit transfer? So uh, we have some deadlines for credit transfer application. For horizontal uh, credit transfer, uh, you have to submit your application within two weeks upon completion of mobility, mobility semester or program transfer approval. For the vertical credit transfer, you have to submit it within the first two weeks of semester of studies. And uh, we have uh, put some limitation of the credit transfer can be applied. For mobility student, a maximum of 30%. For vertical subject, subject to terms and condition, uh, a maximum 50%. And for transfer program from other universities, maximum uh, 50%. A maximum credit determined by the dean and subject to residential requirement for transfer within UPM programs. And the credit transfer is only considered for a course of study which is similar and pass with minimum grade of C or equivalent and pass with minimum grade C plus subject to program standard requirement. Equivalent course is a course taken previously and has at least some credit load and at least 80% of similarity in the course content with the course requested for credit transfer. Further, a course which has been granted credit transfer shall not be registered again by the student. And the credit transfer of courses taken from other university must be deliberated and approved by UPM Academic Equivalency Committee. There are some uh, differences uh, between uh, credit transfer and also cost exemption. Cost exemption refer to a cost which is exempted to student but the credit must be replaced by taking other costs. Example, a student from Brunei is exempted from taking Bahasa Melayu but shall replace the credit by taking uh, other costs. For uh, credit transfer, a similar or equivalent cost which has been granted credit transfer requires no replacement of credit. The credit transfer is computed as part of the credit earned for the fulfillment of graduation requirement. For horizontal credit transfer, the grade of, grade, the grade of credit transfer will be computed in the uh, CGPA of student's program of studies. For vertical credit transfer, no grade of credit transfer will be computed in the CGPA of student's program of studies. Next, I would like to touch a bit on the academic system, academic advisor and course of studies. We have academic advisor system where each student will be assigned to one academic advisor who will be advising him 
thrown out her studies and uh, academic calendar comprises first semester and second semester we also have third semester or uh, known as short semester that will be offered uh, if need arises uh, particularly after uh, the completion of the final examination of the second semester and uh, we also determine the credit for graduation so you have to ensure that you have fulfilled all the credits and course component required for graduation under the MQF uh, a minimum credit required for a bachelor program is 120 but it varies between program to another program and depend also on the program standard and the study scheme you have to ensure your, you, you uh, to follow your program study scheme to avoid clash of timetable or uh, study progress interruption and uh, please adhere to the academic rules and regulation and also please check your registration record to ensure your study progress are in order these are some of the academic advisor responsibility to you number one is to monitor students study progress Number two is to advise students on course registration and endorse the registration. Number three is to advise students to register course according program structure and study plan. Number four, to advise students on how to overcome academic problem. Number five, to help students to overcome non-academic issues. Number six, to supervise group project. Number seven, to plan, organize activity and monitor students under his or her advisory. And number eight is to assist students in understanding the program structure and requirement. It is important also for you to understand the program component and definition. Uh, we have um, some categories for uh, course under your program. The first one is university course. This course is to ensure students get comprehensive learning that you have passed, you, have, you must pass the uh, university course. The core course is to ensure student gets knowledge and skills in his field of studies. Also, you have to pass. The elective course, you can choose according to the interest to support program. And uh, if a student fails, he can repeat or take other elective in the same component. And uh, the, for the compulsory course, uh, constitute of university course and trust course, and for equivalent course, it's course that have 80% content similarity and equivalent credit, as I mentioned, especially for the credit transfer purposes. And audit course, credit, this course you can take as audit, uh, which means that credit hours shall not be calculated in the registration and the grade shall not be calculated in the ABG or your CGPA. And we also have co-curriculum with credit, which uh, is compulsory for you to take a minimum of two credits of this component uh, as a re graduation requirement. Next, I would like to touch on the deferment of studies or change program or major. For deferment of studies, uh, a student may defer his studies on any reason within the first seven weeks of the semester. Deferment after week 7 is allowed only on health basis as recommended by UPMs or government hospitals medical officer. You have to make sure that uh, you have the recommendation from the UPM or government hospital and not from the public, not from the private uh, hospital medical officer. And the application for deferment will not be considered after the commencement of final examination week. And uh, the maxim maximum period for deferment of studies is four semesters and it's not counted for maximum duration of studies. Uh, the difference is only for the Doctor of Medicine program, uh, which uh, this program imposes separate rules on deferment of studies. For changing of program and, uh, and, and majors, new student is not allowed to change program or major. Change of program of studies is only allowed after the completion of second semester. 
with the approval from the relevant deans and uh, student with good standing is eligible to apply for credit transfer and student with CGPA less than 2.0 may apply for change of program studies but is not qualified for credit transfer that means they have to be considered as a new student without any credit transfer to a new program and the change of major must be approved by the dean of the program of studies next i would like to take i would like to touch on examination marks and grade uh, we implement continuous assessment in upm which include test assignment quiz reports final examination uh, normally final examination the uh, the the marks is uh, the maximum is 40% except as determined by the program standard like uh, bachelor of uh, nursing for instance and um, please be informed that plagiarism is an offense under the rules of academic matters in UPM students are prohibited from committing plagiarism data forgery or cheating and students who committed those actions shall be liable for disciplinary action. For examination uh, regulations, a student must adhere to examination regulation. A student who fails to sit in examination will be given zero mark for that examination. And a student who fails to sit for examination may apply for replacement examination within two weeks from the original date of the examination or any time provided before the start of the following semester. A student who fails to sit for replacement examination shall be given zero marks. <coughs> as uh, additional information, a student who is classified as senior and is in the last two semesters may apply for special, special examination for a course he has failed. The maximum grade can be given in the special examination is the minimum grade to pass according to his program of studies. Final semester who obtains fail and terminated with deficit point uh, of uh, 24 or less than that can repeat any course he fails or takes to improve his CGPA so that he can graduate in maximum two additional semesters provided the additional semesters is still within the maximum duration of study. Those students who fail to attend examination or any test will be given zero mark for such test or examination. And uh, a student who fails to sit for examination on a reasonable ground may apply for replacement examination. The dean, after consultation with the course lecturer, may approve the re replacement examination which can be conducted within two weeks uh, from the date of original examination or before the commencement of the following semester. And all students must comply with all regulations imposed in such assessment. And uh, for replacement exam, is, uh, if the student fails to attend replacement exam within the stipulated period will be given zero mark and lost his opportunity to apply for other replacement examination. We also have uh, some provision for appeal for grade review. A student who is not satisfied with examination result may ap appeal for grade review for such course to the Division of Academic Governance. The appeal can be made from the first day of the result uh, was announced until the first week of the following semester and 20 ringgit processing fee per course will be imposed. A student who received failed and terminated status may, be, may appeal for review against termination to the same division and the appeal can be made within the two weeks after the result was announced. And uh, 50 ringgit will, processing fee will be imposed and the processing fee will be returned to student for successful appeal. 
Student status will be determined by the cumulative grade point average and also uh, student status in previous semester. Those who got CGPA uh, with a minimum of 2.0 uh, will be given good standing and uh, can continue the studies. And those who have deficit point uh, less than 12 will be given warning status. And those who have deficit point uh, between 12 to uh, uh, between 12 to uh, not more than 24 will be given a uh, probation status. And those who receive deficit point of 24 and above or for a student with probation status who fail to ob obtain a minimum CGP of 2.0 in the semester will be given a uh, termination uh, status. These are the marking and grading system uh, we have uh, from A to F and uh, for some programs such as uh, nursing, engineering program and studio course at uh, Faculty of uh, Design and Architecture, uh, those students who, uh, who obtain grade, uh, who obtain marks uh, below 50, between 40 to 49 will be given grade D to C and they still have to repeat the course until they pass with a minimum grade of C. And this is how we uh, calculate the grade point average. The grade point average is the semester, semester result um, based, on grade, based on grand total of grade point divided by grand total of credit hours. And for the uh, CGPA, cumulative grade point average, is based on total cumulative value points divided by total cumulative credit hours. And deficit point uh, is uh, uh, total cumulative grade point multiplied by 2 minus total cumulative value point obtained. Uh, these are the uh, sample of the how we calculate the grade point, uh, the, the grade and the grade point. And uh, we also have classification of degree. Uh, we have uh, first class honors, uh, those who receive or those who obtain CGPA between 3.750 to 4.0. And for the second class upper honors, uh, those who obtain CGPA between 3.0 to 3.749. And those uh, who, who obtain a CGPA of uh, 2.250 to 2.999 uh, will be classified as second class lower honors and those um, who obtain a CGPA uh, between 2.0 to 2.249 will be classified as third class honors. And uh, for your information, uh, classification of doctor of veterinary medicine degree is only passed but uh, we uh, will the CGBA will be stated on the transcript and uh, the classification of doctor medicine degree is passed. These are some of the uh, other matters including the MPU. MPU means mata pelajaran umum or general course which is which is um, which is compulsory for you to register and pass. And uh, we have uh, a list of courses for Malaysian and also for non-Malaysian. And uh, you, can, uh, you can consult your academic advisors and also uh, the dean of your faculty for further information. And we also have uh, English uh, learning experience package. Uh, we call it LX uh, in short. This is based on your um, 
TOEFL or your IELTS or your CIP result. So um, basically, we have uh, uh, three package uh, for those uh, who have uh, TOEFL 500 to 559. Uh, they will have to take uh, BBI and also. <coughs> Sell and also 24 point of legs, and also for those with TOEFL 600 to um, and above, you will have to take two BBI or LPE. LPE is an English course, and also one sell and 24 uh, legs point. And um, I think uh, you have to consult your academic advisors and your faculty uh, for further information. And um, UPM encourage students to participate in mobility. So second, second, year, second year student and above, uh, but final semester is encouraged to participate in outbound mobility study abroad. For mobility, credit transfer, industrial training, short-term exchange. And uh, of course, we try our best to uh, provide uh, Financial system, but, but, but it's quite limited, uh, subject to term and condition. And credit transfer for cost taken in mobility program can be considered subject to term and condition prescribed for equaling cost that you can uh, apply for credit transfer for your program. Some of the notable um, mobility programs uh, participated, participated by UPM uh, ASEAN International Mobility Students or AIMS, ASEAN UC uh, Plus 3 or AUM Plus 3, Meflana with Turkey and also Erasmus Mundus uh, with uh, some universities in Europe. So I guess uh, that uh, some of the information I would like to share with you. And again, terima kasih. I wish you all the best. Selamat Majuraya and enjoy your stay in UPM. Thank you.